Welcome back to the second part of our lesson for this week. So let's look and see what we did. Um, in the last unit, uh, we learned about defining variables, both in racket code, and so here's what that looks like in racket code, and um, how variable definitions look in algebra. Today we're going to look at some actual video game code uh, that you can start to um, use in defining your game. Um, I accidentally deleted something here that I need. Let me see if I can go back here. It is. I only meant to move, remove this. Because mine's going to look a little bit different than yours. All right. So we're going to find this file, game.rkt. So racket of files end with rkt. So um, in your folder, uh, for this class that you have on your desktop. Open that up. And mine's going to look a little bit different since I'm on the Mac, but if you can't find it, just find me and I'll, I'll help you. But in your folder, you're going to see a, a folder called BS1. So open BS1. And then in there, Resources, Source Files. That should look like this. Uh, if it's sorted by name, and in there you should see the name, uh, the, the game.rkt. So double click on that, and that should open in Racket. If any of that doesn't look right, or if you don't get this far, then come and find me because um, um, there's a lot of different ways that can go wrong. So um, let me know if you don't get here. But if you do get here, then let's look at this in Racket. Um, so this is uh, the, our first. Um, look at a, a real big racket program um, and you can see they've used the comment character to um, make some some visual divisions in the code and also to put some notes um, we know now know about defines so you can see all the defines they've done let's go on and, and look down through here and see some other things so they're kind of numbering out the different parts Ah, so here's an example of a contract, just like they told us in professional programs. We'll see a contract, so this update danger is going to be the name of the function. It's going to take in a number and um, produce a number. So I'm going to look down through here, but you can pause any time, and you can look down through here yourself. And this is going to be this the, you know, all the things that are going to be needed for the game. And then it's going to finally this G is going to be the whole game. It's going to take this make game function. It's going to take all the stuff that's been defined so far and start the game. So um, let's do that. So I'm going to hit run. And you can too. You can pause anytime and hit run. And it will get everything set up. And then let me move mine into the screen. So here's a rocket. And we can push buttons and all that stuff. And nothing happens. But that's okay. Because all those functions that are in there, that's what we'll have to, um, uh, that's what we'll have to do to, uh, over the next few weeks is uh, fill those in so that, that our rocket will, or so that our game will work. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And so you can too, just close that. But leave uh, leave racket open with the source code up here. Just hit X to close that um, game part. And we we saw all that. We looked at the make game function. It's going to insert our definitions inside that giant function. So so make game it just just is a giant function that takes all the different parts of the game. And then it gets called every tenth of a second. So that's how we're going to make animation, right? Is that um, when the clock ticks, we're going to make pictures move either automatically or with using uh, keys that we're going to bind to uh, different functions. And that's what's going to make the, the animation happen. So now let's look at a couple of things. We ran 
we ran this, right? So it actually ran all of these definitions. So we should have access to all of these things. Um, so I'm going to just print the to define title. Let's look and see if we can see the title. T I T O. Um, ah, it's not a function called title. It's just a uh, symbol. So it doesn't need parentheses. But there it is, my game. Um, uh, notice that they're all in, in uppercase. So uppercase title is defined, but look at this, T-I-T-L-E, not defined. So those are two different things. If they have different capitalization, they're two different things. So one common um, technique is to put these constants, they're called, in uh, uppercase. So this is going to be something that's going to be kind of defined as a configuration value to tell our game how to work. Um, and so we'll put that in uppercase. And so down here you can see you know, other things that are in lowercase. So it really makes our thing stand out. Let's look at this screenshot. So, um, let's see. Well, let's see. Before we do that, so why don't you pause here and then go into um, Racket and just um, look around at the uh, code. And then anytime you want to down here, just type in, you know, anything that's defined here and see what it looks like. So pause now. Okay, good. So you can change any of those things. Um, so, you know, Racket is interactive. So if we wanted to change, um, change anything here and then hit run, it would change it. So, um, yeah, if we wanted to change any of the things that we saw there, uh, if we wanted to change the background to a different color, if we wanted to um, change the, the, the title. So let's, let's practice doing that. Let's do one of those. All right, let's, let's change the background. I'll do that. Uh, maybe. If it's already, oh, let's see. I think we'll have to do it. Can't do it interactively. We actually have to do it here. So here's what I do when I have to change something that's in a source file. I put a semicolon to comment it out right you know there and then at the end of the line I put my initials so that way I can find it if I need it and then I copy and paste it down here so that way the original is still there with my initials so I can go back and find it um, when I need to so green all right now let's run I'm just guessing that green is the name of a, a color that's already defined in that um, that images teacher pack. And there it is. So there's oh, let me get that in your frame. So there's the 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 screen with the that uh, color changed. And of course we saw uh, my game um I'll close that. We saw the title my game was where that's defined, so you could change this to say Joseph's game. Uh, you can change the color of the letters, uh, the rocket. So now you'll see that they didn't name it anything rocket. So what they did, remember we have four different parts of our game. We have a background, the danger, the, the, um, the goal, and the, um, the player. And so in their game, the player is this picture of a rocket. But in your game, it's going to be um, the ninja cat, right? And then the danger here um, is it didn't show up on that screen, but it's going to be um, a triangle. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it's just a triangle. And so we can replace all of these with your images that you're going to make for your game. And that'll be pretty easy. Just, just like I just replaced that um, background um, color, you can... You can change any of the images to be your, your images. And so we'll talk this week about whether you want to get some images off the Internet or whether you want to make some in GIMP. Um, so you can change anything you want to there. So pause now and just play around with a couple of things that you want to change and make sure that you know how to um, change different things. And This was a good example of title and title color. So change those to be whatever you want. Okay. 
Um, so here's something else to um, just a, a new function. Every every um, lesson they're introducing some new functions. So this one's called scale, and um, you know there's different uses for the word scale, uh, but this is not like a bathroom scale. Uh, when you scale something, that means you increase it or decrease it by a certain size. So uh, if, if like um, in model railroads, sometimes they'll talk about a certain scale. Well, that means this this model is one tenth of the size of the real thing. Um, so scale just means to make something go bigger or smaller. So if it is a positive number, then it um, will make it go bigger. If it's a if it's a um, number, I'm oh, sorry. Not positive. They're always positive. Scale is always positive. If it is a um, number bigger than one, then it's going to grow. If it's a number smaller than one, then it's going to shrink. So let's make our own solid green triangle. Um, and in fact, let's use a definition so I don't have to keep typing it. So I'm just going to def uh, define t. And let's make that a triangle. Ten. Solid. Green. All right, let's see what it looks like. There it is. Pretty small. So let's scale it up. Let's make it three times bigger. Scale. Three. See, that made it three times bigger. Now, my original one is still the same. So we can, let's scale ten times bigger. It's pretty big. All right, now let's make a big triangle. Let's make a new one called Big T. What do we want to define? Define Big T. Let's make a triangle. And let's make it 50, uh, 30. Um, let's make it, forgot what it was like, solid. Three. All right, let's look at big T. Oh, that wasn't too big. All right. Uh, all right, let's make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Let's make it a hundred. Uh, all right. Didn't like that since I already named it. Let's make it big T two. All right, that's a little better. All right, now let's scale that down. So let's shrink it. Let's make it half size. And we know um, in arithmetic that half is the same as 0.5. So let's do um, uh, scale 0.5. And that's the same as 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 are the same. Uh, 0.5, big T, T2. And there's a smaller one. So scale, just like the uh, documents it says, so scale takes a number and an image, and it produces an image, and that image is going to be scaled up or down. Um, so why don't you um, pause right here and try out these two um, functions to um, see how scale works. All right, good. So here's some other things you can do. So you can find some images um, that are loaded in here. We know we have a rocket somewhere. Um, in fact, let's do that. I'll do one and you can do some others. Um, player. I bet player is the rocket. Let's check it. All right, so there's the rocket. Um, flip vertical, flip horizontal, or rotate. Um, let's see what it looks like if we rotate it. I don't know what number is. Let's see. Can I do dock rotate? Hmm. 
no. Um, I think I can click on rotate and hit F1. And that'll open up a browser, which is going to be really big. You won't be able to see much. There, rotate. Good, it's in that 2 HTDP image that we, teacher pack that we loaded. All right, rotate by an angle. Okay, all right, that's all we wanted to check out. All right, so there's our rocket. Now, um, and what was the signature? It takes a number and an image and produces an image. So, let's rotate. Rocket. Nope, one rocket player. Um, 90 degrees. Just flip it on that side, right? Oh, I have it backwards. But, good thing that the air tells us exactly what we did wrong. Yep, there it is. Let's see, what do we think the other direction was? Um, so, if at 90 degrees, it looks like it, it rotated around counterclockwise. So, if we wanted it to lay it on its right, so here it is. If we wanted to lay it on its right, we could do either two ways. So, let's see. Upside down would be 180. Yep. And 180 plus 90. Ah, you know what? I don't even have to figure that out. Let's do... Um, times 190. All right, so that's going to take it just one around uh, Leon's left, just like we saw. Yep. All right, now if we do two 90s, that would take it upside down. Yep. All right, let's do three 90s. That'll take it over on its other side. All right, let's do four 90s, even though that actually it shouldn't look any different, right? I mean, four 90s should make it back around, and it should look just like player. And it does. Um, oh, I wanted to see what happens if it understands. So three 90s was over on its right. And actually, that's the same as a negative 90. So I'm going to put minus 1 in here and see if it understands that. I don't know if it will or not. Yep. So you can see that. Uh, and let's let's make that a little clearer. That rotate can go either direction. Minus 90. Oops. Minus 90 takes it over to the right. So that's cool. So play around with rotate. Uh, you know, any pictures that you want. And uh, look at, to see if you can figure out what flip horizontal and flip vertical do. So pause now and play with those. All right, great. So one more thing in this program is screenshot. Let's look at that definition. So, um, you know, in videos, um, in, in, in gaming magazines or posters, they a lot of times will have a screenshot of the game. And so even though we didn't see it, um, you know, in the playing part, it's defined in here. And there it is. Oh, it's got my green background still, right? Because I made that. And it's got, um, uh, it's got, uh, right, I did, did a problem when I did that green background. Because there's also, uh, so the danger is the, the triangle. But the target is a circle that's also green. So it's here, but you can't see it. So I'm going to change that back, and like I said, I do that, I'm going to search. For TSC. There it is. And so, I'm going to comment out my old one. And put my initials there, and then I'm going to erase my initials here. 
put this back to the way it was. All right, then I'm going to run it again. So yeah, using comments like that and putting your initials on it's just easy ways to, to make experimental changes and then take them back to the way they used to be pretty easily. All right, so now it's back to the way it was. All right, now look at let's look at screenshot again. Okay, so that screenshot's a little better. There it is. All right, so there's the danger, which is green. No, oh, sorry. The danger is this red guy. The uh, target is this green ball. So uh, redefine some things in here. See if you can move. See what happens. See if you can move um, the danger up here on this same level as this and see if you can move the um, uh, the target down here a little bit lower, move them around. Just play with moving those around. Um, you will have to, let's see, see what screenshot does. Now I think you can just change it in screenshot if you just want to move the positions around. Um, you know, so, so do what I did and, you know, put some comments here if you want to change that. And then put your own version in here. So let's say target is the target. target is the circle. All right, and it's at 500, 400. So let's bring it down a little bit. Let's make it 500, 200. All right, that should change it over a little bit. And let's run. So it didn't change anything in the this part that we see here at the beginning of the game. But if we evaluate screenshot again, yep, we can see now that ball has moved down. So uh, pause right now and take a little time and play with screenshot and move some of these things around on the screen. All right, great. So yep, we just remember that you, know, you you as you noticed, um, the the screen is 640 by 480. All right, so being able to define values in a programming language is a powerful tool, um, and you learned that last time. And this was a really good example of how you can use definitions in your program. Um, so it, it makes it a whole lot easier to read um, and more maintainable. So in the next lesson. We'll learn how to not, you've already learned how to define your own variables. Now we'll learn how to define your own functions. And that'll be the next lesson. Goodbye.